Hey guys, it's been two years since the last Supra video and I've had a ton of people ask me for updates and where the car is now. To be honest, I started making this video about a year ago, but some unforeseen things happened which I'll get to in a bit, which kind of dragged this out for a little bit longer than I expected. The good news is I still own it, I haven't sold it, and this is how the car sits at this moment and I still enjoy it pretty often. If any of you remember what happened last, I turned the boost up to 41 PSI for a racing event after which the car developed a ticking problem. Strangely enough, I still managed to drive the car home, which I don't suggest any of you try to do if you find yourself in this situation, since ticking sounds can sometimes be a precursor to something more catastrophic. So I've had some people try and guess what was wrong with the car. Maybe it was a spun bearing or some type of valve train issue. And even I'd originally thought that it was something minor, like a head or cam issue. And there's your noise. So some of you may be able to guess what had happened. I had made so much power at 41 PSI that I had snapped the wrist pin that connects the small end of the rod to the piston. For those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, the main part or bottom end of your engine is composed of a solid metal chunk called the block, which has holes in it called cylinders. Some blocks have four cylinders, some eight cylinders, and like a Supra has six cylinders. Inside the block sits the crank. Please excuse the crudity of this model. I didn't have time to build it to scale or to paint it. Rail crankshafts look more like this, and they convert reciprocating or back and forth motion to rotational motion. It's similar to the crank on your bike, which converts the up and down reciprocating motion of your foot on the pedals to the rotational motion that drives the wheels. It's similar to pedaling a bike, like having a bunch of feet pressing on the crankshaft to turn the wheels. Except instead of having dirty legs and feet, you have this. A piston and rod assembly connected together here by a wrist pin with this big end that goes around the crank. So what you end up with is a crankshaft rotating due to the up and down motion of the pistons in the cylinders of the block all connected together by the rods. Inside the cylinders, the engine ignites a mixture of fuel and air and the force of these explosions is what moves the pistons. So in an effort to make more power, you need more air to burn more fuel and usually that involves either either bigger cylinders or a longer stroke, kind of like a bigger guy riding our bike. Or another way is you could add more cylinders, which is kind of like having more people riding the bike together. Now, both of these ways of extracting more power involve increasing engine size or displacement. For some cars like the Supra, however, instead of making the engine size bigger, you use this. It's called a turbo, and it's an exhaust-driven turbine that essentially force-feeds the engine with air instead of letting it breathe on its own. There's a valve here called the wastegate which controls the boost, or how much air the engine is force-fed. Inside the car, I have a switch here that controls how much boost I run. The more boost, the more power I make. Depending on the situation, you can see me sometimes flip the switch over to a higher setting when I'm racing. So I had changed the boost on the highest setting to a level that overcame the metal parts in the engine and broke the wrist pin. And the reason for this was, in an effort to save some money when I first changed out my stock short block, I had purchased a pre-built short block online and I wasn't aware of what wrist pins were specced in that build. And to be fully honest, this was actually not the first time I had broken something in a motor. After my first racing event from the first video, the car was actually doing this. This rod was from that stock motor, and as some of you may have noticed, that bend in it is not a good thing. I also managed to crack the pistons, so in all, I had actually broken two motors. So this third time around, I made sure to spec the right parts, learning the hard way that you get what you pay for and that you should do things right the first time, even if it takes longer or is more expensive. But sadly, even if everything is done right, things can still go wrong. And after two weeks of having the car back, it decided to spit this out through the oil pan, leaving this on the driveway along with three quarts of oil. Apparently, upon assembling the short block, the shop forgot to torque down the rod bolts. So after a few miles of driving, they backed out, and with nothing holding the rod cap on, it decided to make itself a nice hole to leave through. So with that, it was back to the shop for motor number four. Now, thankfully, the shop covered their mistake, and I had the car back in about one month. And after that, it was finally time to have some fun again. It was the longest stretch the car had been healthy. I took it to three or four events for a grand total of over 60 full power runs. And from learning my lesson from the last video, I kept the power at 38 PSI, just a hair under 900 horsepower.
Sadly, all good things come to an end, and at an event last March in a race against a supercharged C7 Corvette, the transmission started whining. It was leaking transmission fluid everywhere and I had it towed home and after inspection I found that I had cracked the transmission case open. I pulled the trans myself and sent it out for repair after which they told me I had also damaged several other parts including a now discontinued V160 countershaft. Luckily for me my friend had a used one which I bought and four months later I put the repair transmission back in and here we are again. Since then I've put these new wheels and tires on but honestly I think my racing days may be over. Especially after being in and out of the shop so many times in the last few years, honestly, just having it running now is good enough for me.